Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. Let's get back to creating our Flappy Bird game. Now in the last video we showed you how to instantiate or spawn our pipe prefabs into the scene. In other words, we spawn our obstacles into the scene. And in this video what we want to do is we're going to first add a little bit of code to our ground segments so that they can reposition themselves when they go off the side of the screen so that we get a fluid looping motion with our ground segments. The next thing that we want to do after that, because that shouldn't take very long, is we're going to add a little bit of functionality to our pipes or our obstacles so that when our bird successfully flies between the pipes, it increments the player's score. And so let's get started. Here we have Unity open, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new script for our ground segment. So let's go create C Sharp script. I'm gonna call it ground. Let's go ahead and then open it in Visual Studios. Once you have it opened in Visual Studios, let's create one variable which is going to be a public transform, and it's going to hold the ground spawn object that we created in a previous video. The next thing that we want to do is create a new function. So it's going to be a void, and I'm going to call it reposition. Parentheses, curly braces, Inside this function, what we want to do is first detect whether or not the current ground segment that this script is attached to is at a position that we can then say, oh, it needs to be repositioned on the other side of the screen. And to do this, we're going to actually use the ground spawn object, which is on the right side of the screen, but we're going to use its x value of its position, and we're going to make that x value negative so flipping it to the other side of the screen. And if our current ground segment reaches that position or less than that position, we're gonna then know, oh, it's time to reposition it on the other side of the screen. And so to do this, we're gonna type if, and then we want the current transform of this game object. So transform.position.x is less than or equal to ground spawn dot position dot x but we don't want the positive value of the ground spawns position because that's on the right side of the screen we want that we want the negative and so to do this we're going to flip it by putting a negative sign in front of the ground spawn dot position dot x now what we want to do is then reposition this current ground object to the position of our ground spawn so I'm going to type transform.position is equal to ground spawn dot position. Then we need a semicolon, and I'm gonna make sure that I call this function in our update function. So reposition, parentheses, semicolon. Let's go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, we need to apply this ground code to our ground segments or our ground sprite objects. So I'm going to go ahead and select both our death zone ground objects. So ground so ground one and ground two, or ground one and ground two. Then I'm going to select our ground script and drag it into the inspector. Once in the inspector, you can see that we have our public ground spawn variable and we need to assign it because there's no value. And so I'm gonna click on our ground spawn object, which is in the hierarchy, drag it into our, our ground spawn field. There's one more thing that we need to change before we hit the play button to test this script. And that is when we hit play, every other ground segment will find there to be a tiny gap. Um, it's noticeable and so we wanna fix it. So to fix this, what we need to do is select both our death zone, ground two, and our ground spawn. And since they share the same transform, well, the same position, you can see that there's values in the X, Y, and Z. If they were different transforms or different positions, you would see dashes in these fields, just like you can see these dashes in the X and the Y of our scale 
because the ground and the ground spawn have different scales. And so because they're sharing the same position, we can then click and drag them so that our ground one and our ground two are overlapping, but we wanna make sure that there's no seam. And so right about there is good because you can see this candy cane pattern of the light and dark green colors or the grass are now matching. The line, there's no seam. So if there was a seam, it would look a little bit like this. You could see right here, there's a tiny seam or right there, there's a seam. And so I'm gonna undo that so that we have no seam. Now what we can do is hit play and see how it works. So it's working pretty good. We have our ground and it keeps repeating itself. It keeps looping through the same motion and you can see how it works in the scene view. When one ground segment gets off to the left side of the screen, it's completely off the side of the screen. It then repositions itself on the other side of the screen. Pretty neat, huh? Now, there may be every once in a while a tiny seam that is noticeable. I think I just saw one, but that's okay. If we had more time, we would work on this code and we would refine it a little bit more until it was so unnoticeable that no player would be able to, to spot it. But since this is just a tutorial and we're just we don't, we're, we have a limit on our time. This is as good as we can do at the moment. But now that the ground segments are done and good and they're repeating, we can get on to our pipe prefab and making it so that when a player flies through the pipes, it increments their score. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is select our pipe prefab and drag it into the scene. Once we have it in the scene, we're going to want to create a new box collider on this object. And so I'm going to actually create a new empty object that is a child to our pipes or our parent pipes. Then I'm going to rename it to score zone. And let's add a physics 2D box collider. We then want to drag our empty game object off to the right side of our pipes so that it is flush with the right side of our pipes. You can zoom in and see this green box and we want the left side of our green box to be touching the right side of our pipes. We then want to scale this box up in the Y direction and we want to scale it up so that the top of the box reaches the top of the screen and the bottom of the green box reaches the bottom of the screen. And if you want to extend a little bit further past the top of the screen and past the bottom of the screen, that's good too. So the right about there is pretty good. Now what we want to do is make sure that we check is trigger because we want to have the bird be able to pass through this object. So now that we have that, we can go to our parent pipe object and hit apply and then delete it from our scene. Now what we want to do is add a little bit of code so that when our player intersects with this invisible box, it increments their score. So let's go to our player script or our player controller script, open that in Visual Studios. Once you have it open in Visual Studios, we're going to need to create a new score variable. So at the bottom of our variables, I'm going to type public and this is going to be an int and then I'm going to call it player score. Now what we need to do is create another condition in our on trigger enter 2d function and this is going to check to see whether the other dot tag is equal to something like score. So other dot tag is equal to quotes and I'm actually going to call it score zone. Inside these curly braces, we're then going to type player score plus plus semicolon. 
We're going to go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. Once in Unity, we actually need to go back to our pipes prefab because we need to apply a tag to our new collider zone or our trigger zone. And so what I've done here is I've selected our pipe prefab and I've expanded it by clicking this arrow. And then you can see your score zone object right here. And once we've selected our score zone object, we can then go tag, go to add tag, and I'm going to then hit the plus sign and I'm going to type score zone. And it's really important that you spell it exactly the same way as you have in your code. Once I've added the tag, I'm going to go back to our prefabs folder, select our score zone, go to our tag, and then there you can see our new tag, and I'm going to set it to that tag. Now we can go ahead and hit play. And as we play, we need to actually fix one other thing. We only want the pipes to instantiate if the game is active. So to do this, we're going to go to our game controller script. Because our game controller script is what is instantiating our pipe prefabs into the scene. And so to fix this, what we want to do is create a new variable that's actually going to hold the player script or the player controller script. So I'm going to type public, then player controller, then let's just call this PC, and we're going to have a semicolon. Then what we need to do is in our timer, our if timer is less than or equal to zero, we want to add another condition that says and PC dot is start equals true. So let's go ahead and save. Now we can go back to Unity and test our script. So when I hit play, no pipes are spawning and that's because our game hasn't started yet. I'm actually going to select our player and move it closer to the left side of the screen so that I have more time to dodge the pipes. And I'm going to actually need to fix this because I changed it while playing and it's going to revert back. But when I hit, when I click the screen, you can see that pipes haven't started yet. And that is because we haven't saved our player in the new variable that we created. So I'm going to select our game controller. You can see our PC variable is null. And so I'm going to select our player and drag it into that field. You can see now that our player controller script is the value of our PC variable. Now I can go ahead and hit play. No pipes are spawning. When I click the screen, I'm then dodging the pipes. And if I hit pause, we can select our player and you can see that our player score is set to two because we have successfully dodged two pipes. I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna show you one more time and then we'll conclude this video. I'm gonna scoot our player off to the left side of our camera and now I'm gonna hit play Pipes aren't spawning because we haven't started the game yet, but as soon as I click the screen, pipes then start and I can dodge. And if you look over into our inspector, trying to keep my eyes on the game, but you can see our player score has increased. And if I can keep dodging these pipes, then hit pause real quick, our player score is now at six. So that's pretty awesome. That's pretty much Flappy Bird right there. So I just noticed something when I selected our pipes prefab and I selected each pipe, I noticed that they're not tagged with anything. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I tag them with the death zone. I'm pretty sure I set them in a previous video, but maybe along the lines, somehow they got untagged. And so I'm gonna make sure that we hit we select them as death zones 
And now let's test it, make sure that part of our game's working, or when I click and I run into the pipes, they keep moving so it's kind of hard to see because it immediately... Yep, there we go. That's the end of the game because I just ran into the pipes and bird died. So right there, we've pretty much made Flappy Bird. There's not much left to the game. There's a few more details that can make our game more appealing to players, more user-friendly, such as a UI, a menu. We can, in our next video, what we'll probably do is we'll add a little bit of script so that when you click the screen and your bird flaps, the bird angles a little bit up and then as he starts to fall he starts to angle down towards the ground so it's almost like he's front heavy or, or nose heavy and so that's going to be a really fun segment of code but that's everything that we're going to cover in this video we hope that it was straightforward that it made sense if there was anything that you missed or was confused about you can always go back and rewatch it Make sure that you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.